Hey everybody, this is In The Mix with Sister Johnny and I hope that you had a wonderful week and you're ready for the weekend just as I am because this week has been in a word, interesting. <laughs> That's all I can say. It was interesting and I'm happy that this interesting week is coming to an end. Amen. For those of you that are listening to In The Mix for the very first time, I'd like to welcome you to In The Mix. If you'd like to catch up on some of the previous shows, you can go to my YouTube channel and subscribe there. God bless all of you. Thank you for everyone that's already subscribed to my channel. I'm ready to just get right into it because today I'm doing something a little bit different, a little bit out the box. Um, everyone that listens to my show, they know that I normally read a scripture and I expound on the word of God. But today I want to do something a little bit different. I want to talk about how you can become a homeowner and the steps you need to take to do that. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I have such a great response to my new segment that I rolled out last week, which is five minutes with Sister Johnny. And basically it's just five minutes that I'll talk about something that's informative or something that will help you in some way that's positive. And that last segment, that first segment actually that I did was on how you can make money from home. and. I had so many people, people reaching out to me and asking me questions about it that I thought, you know what, let me do my show about something that's been on my heart and it's just information to help those that are looking or desire to buy a home on some tips on how they can start. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I'm a homeowner myself. I have been for a while now and I want to be able to share this information to those that may be interested in buying a home. So go ahead and get your notepad, get your iPad, whatever you need to take notes because I'm gonna give you some tips on what can help you to get started, all right? I'll give you a few seconds. All right, so this is going to be, again, a show about how you can purchase a home. And it doesn't matter if you're 20 years old. It doesn't matter if you're 18. If you're 18 years old and you have a job, we you can at least start the process, all right? Um, the thing is, wherever you are financially, wherever you are with your credit history, you can start now working on it so that you can become a homeowner. And I'm not even going to waste time. I'm just going to get right into it. I have six six steps that will it may be seven I don't know where we're gonna go with this but so far I wrote out six steps that will get you to um, home ownership the very first thing that I'm gonna um, recommend that you do is to go get pre-qualified that may sound real crazy you're just gonna jump right into the, the ocean <laughs> no baby steps you just gonna be dropped off in the ocean absolutely jump in. I mean, you don't have no more time to waste. You've been waiting already. So go get pre-qualified. That's something that I did and it worked for me. I'm only talking about my own experience. I am not a realtor. I am not going to try and sell, get, get you to buy a home or whatever. I'm not doing that at all. This is strictly informational. The very first thing again you want to do is to go get pre-qualify my recommendation is that you go to a a bank that is well known you know don't just go to a third party lender or anything like that like go to like a a, a well-known bank a financial institution and or credit union Go to a well-known bank or credit union and get pre-qualified. Sit down with a banker and say, hey, I want to get pre-qualified for a loan. What do I need to do? Nowadays, they have you go online and you just, it's kind of like a one pager questionnaire that you fill out and you submit it with those questions and then they'll let you know where you are. Or they'll sit down with you and they'll give you a one page or a hard copy. You just fill out the information and then you have to, I think you have to sign a release form or something so they can run your credit or whatever. So once you do that, 
they're going to come back and they're going to tell you where you stand in these four areas. These are subcategories. It's still number one. They're going to come back and tell you where you stand with your income, your credit history, your work history, and your debt to ratio. Y'all heard me? The four things they're going to come back with is your inc- where you stand with your income, credit history, work history, and debt to ratio. And what they're going to explain to you is they're going to tell you how much based on that information I just said, how much house you can afford. Now, you might go in there, don't go in there thinking, oh, I want to live in this particular area. I want a home for at least 500000 Just go in there and tell them you want to be pre-qualified. They're going to tell you what you qualify for. And the reason why you want to do that is this is going to serve as a foundation for you to build upon on reaching the goal of becoming a homeowner. So if, if you can see where you're at, then you can do something about it and you can map out your course to reaching that goal. But right now you can't see it. You're, it's just in your head. It's a thought. It's something that you probably want to do, but you don't know how to go about doing it. So by you going to get pre-qualified, it will help you to start. That's all it is. Okay. So you go get pre-qualified and they may come back and say, starting with your income, well, the houses in the Bay Area, I'm just, gonna, I'm just, I'm not a realtor. I don't know, but they may come back and say, well, let's say you want to get a house in Oakland, Oakland, California. They may say, well, in order for you to get a home in Oakland for at least, let's say 300,000, I'm just saying 300,000, it could be more or less, let's just say 400,000 to get a home in Oakland. You have to at least have a loan for 400,000 based on your income. You're not, you're not going to be able to meet that dollar amount in terms of a loan because of your income and perhaps your credit history. They might say, well, your credit history, you don't have any credit history. So we don't have anything to base your potential for paying back the loan against. So because you don't have any credit history, we don't feel comfortable loaning you that much money. Okay, fair, that's fair. Or they may say, well, because of your credit history and your debt to ratio, even though you make $100,000 a year, I'm just putting that out there, or you may make $50,000 a year. Based on your debt to ratio and your credit history, we don't feel comfortable loaning you any money because your debt outweighs how much you actually have in income and your credit history shows that you don't pay your bills on time. So now we look at you as a risk so you don't qualify. And that's not a bad thing. I want you to know when you go get pre-qualified, everything they're telling you is information you need that will help you to start doing the homework to get those things in order so you can be on the path to home ownership. Okay, so these are good things, even though it sounds bad. It's good things because now, you know, so all of that is going to happen when you take the first step, which is number one, going to get pre-qualified. Again, you want to go through a very well-known bank and or credit union. Okay. And the reason why I say a credit union is because most credit unions have lower interest rates. The thing about credit unions, from my experience, is because they're a smaller financial institution, they don't have a lot of people working there. And so the customer service aspect is not always present. So you may not get immediate phone calls and you may not feel the love, so to speak, because they just don't have the manpower. But in terms of the lower interest rate on the loan, you can get a much better interest rate on a home loan from a credit union. Now, if you go to a larger financial institution like Bank of America, for example, 
then what will happen because they have more people working there and more resources available because of the people that are working there, then the customer service is going to be there a little bit more than the credit union. You know, just it just depends. Some people have different experiences. It may be the other way around for some people. But for the most part, that is how ha- it has been historically. So go to a well-known financial institution and or credit union to get pre-qualified. Okay. The second thing you want to do is you now want to do the work. You want to do the homework, meaning once you go get pre-qualified, now you can either go set up an appointment with a financial counselor that will help do all this for you or walk you through the process, or you can listen to me. This is what I did. I didn't have a financial counselor. This is, this is what I did in order to purchase a home. So after I got pre-qualified, I said, okay, this is what I need. They're going to pull your credit reports. They're going to tell you where you are at your credit, all your financials, all of that. And so once they tell you that, you take that information back and do your homework by looking over your credit report. That's the first thing I will tell you to do because your credit history is telling the financial institution who you are. They're telling you their the credit report or credit history is telling them how likely you are to pay back your loan if they were to give it to you. So you want to work on that first. And since you have your credit report from the financial institution, they may not have all three separately. They may have them all combined in one to show you, but you can actually write to all three credit bureaus, which, which is TransUnion, Asperian and Equifax and you can request a credit report be mailed to you and they will do that for free you we are all entitled to um, a free credit report annually I don't it used to be up to three but it might just be one now I'm not really sure you can go online and check that out also I believe that The three credit bureaus that I just named are also online. So you may not have to actually write out a letter and mail it to them. You can probably just go on their website and request it. They also have other, uh, they have like Credit Karma and all these other third party websites where you can go on there and you can check your credit periodically and it will not ding you. Meaning every time you pull your credit, it will lower your credit score. And that's not what you want to do. But I believe if you go on Credit Karma, you can check without it being any kind of penalty. And that's a great thing. So go on there. All this information will be down in my description box below as well. But you want to look at your credit report and you want to see what's on there. This is all number two, doing your homework. So what you want to do is you want to contact your creditor. So if you have anything in collections, contact First, before you contact the collections agency, you want to make sure that is this a valid debt? Does it belong to you? A lot of times on your credit report, there may be things on there that you did not do. And you can dispute that with the credit bureau. And you may have one thing on Equifax and it may not be on the uh, Hesperian report or vice versa. So you want to look over them thoroughly. And if there's something you don't recognize, you can always dispute it with the credit bureau. And once you dispute it, they're going to send it back to that creditor and say, hey, this person says that they did not create this debt. And they would have to present information, document um, or documents to the credit bureau showing that this is actually your debt. If they cannot present that, then and uh, to the credit bureau, they will go ahead and they will delete it from your credit history. But they do have a certain period of time. I think it's 30 days to respond. If they don't respond within that time period, also they the credit bureau will go ahead and delete it from your credit history. So I hope that makes sense. Also, if you owe child support or you have student loans or auto loans and it's outstanding, You can contact them. Don't be afraid to call them. Call them and make arrangements with child support. They just want to hear from you. If you avoid them, they're going to come after you. I mean, they're going to suspend your license, try to put you in jail. 
and you can work and take care of yourself in jail. So just contact them and let them know, hey, I want to pay, but I need to make arrangements. I can't pay all this. Nine times out of 10, they will work with you. They will work with you. So you want to contact them. If you have a student loan, you want to contact them as well. They really try to work with you. They have all different kind of forbearances and different kind of uh, financial hardships that you can take out or report to them and they will stop payment or they'll have you only pay an interest on it or they will work with you. So just contact them and see what your options are because these people are reporting what you're not paying or your inactivity to the credit bureaus and it's hurting you in the long run. So you have to contact them. The other thing you can do is if you have anything in collections and it is beyond seven years, you can actually contact the credit bureau and say, hey, this debt is beyond seven years. Can you have it removed? And you have to be careful with things in collections because if it's something that's in collections and what the cre- the collection agencies do is they'll sell your information to another collection agency and then they'll put it on your credit report like it's something brand new and it's the same debt from like 10 years ago. If you can prove that and say, hey, this is a debt from 10 years ago and they just sold it or whatever, you're not obligated to pay that. You need to contact the credit bureaus and let them know and they will contact the collection agency and ask them to prove how long they've had the debt and where did they get it from and all of that. Not A lot of times they won't even respond. Or if they do respond, they're not going to have all the supporting documents. And so they can also take that off of your credit. Now, if it's within that seven years or less than seven years and it's truly your debt, you can still contact the collection agency and you can negotiate amount that you're willing to pay. So for example, let's say you have a debt that's $1,000. That's just a number I'm throwing out. And it's in collections and it has been on your credit report three years. Let me say three years. It's been on your credit report for three years. You can contact that collection agency and say, hey, you know, I want to pay this debt off, but I don't have, I don't want to pay $1,000. I want to pay at least $250. $250. I know that's low, but you know, when you negotiate and you got to go low, so they'll meet you somewhere in the middle. They might say, no, we can't do it for that. But, you know, we'll be willing to satisfy the, the debt for $500. So if you pay the $500, then it'll be completely satisfied. But before you pay it, you want to get something in writing. And what they'll do is they'll lock you in for that payment for like the next week or two. And they'll send you something in writing that if you pay this amount, $500, then your debt will be free and clear and and we will receive it as final payment. And we will also notify the credit bureaus. So you want to do that. Now, just note when they contact the credit bureaus, once you make that arrangement, it will show that it's paid in full, but it will still be on your credit for the next so many years. But the fact that you paid it in full is good because it lets financial agency know, oh, okay, well, they, they paid it. Yeah, it was in collections, but they did pay it. So it's almost like it's, it's there just showing that it's paid, but there's no more debt that's rolling on it. And that's good because it shows that you at least tried to pay. Don't worry so much about that. So once you do that, do not try and obtain new credit during this time. You don't want to open up a new line of credit. You don't want to go get an auto loan. You don't want to do any of that. No big purchases while you're cleaning up your credit and you're doing your homework. So remember that where you don't try to go out and buy nothing new. Because remember, your goal is to buy a home. You're just cleaning up your credit, getting all this stuff together so that you can get in the position of home ownership. So once you've done all these things that I've named, you cleaned up your credit and you're, you've made these arrangements and you're make, making payments on those arrangements and not being late because they're going to report every time you pay on time to the credit bureaus. And that's good because it's beginning to show a consistent payment history. The other thing you want to do is if you have credit cards is you want to pay off those credit cards. So you want to contact the credit card companies and see how you can negotiate on a payoff as well. They, they can negotiate with you as well. Now, if you have more than one credit card and you have one credit card with a higher li- a higher credit limit, then what you want to do is see if you can consolidate all of them 
into one and then just negotiating on a, um, a, a payment amount that you can pay comfortably every month. And I wouldn't just do a minimum, like at least figure out how much you have coming in and try to pay. If they say you pay $50 a month, pay $100 a month. You know what I'm saying? Just But just make sure you pay it on time every single month and before the 30 days you want to pay it so you don't accrue any interest okay also if you don't have any credit cards then i do recommend that you open if you're having problems with credit or if you don't have any credit history then you want to get a secured credit card which means you would have to put down some money you may have to put down two hundred dollars or five hundred dollars or seven hundred dollars i just it just varies from credit card to credit card um but you will have to put up some money first to secure that credit card and then they'll give you a credit card and that's fine don't feel bad about again to start making payments start doing purchases on that credit card try not to spend more than what you can afford i always tell people start off with like a secure card and just buy gas and groceries and stuff on it and then before that 30 days is up, pay it all off. So for example, for example, if you have the credit card and you buy gas and groceries and the total you spent was $250 within that 30 days. Well, before that 30 days is up, just write a check for $250 and send it to them. And the reason why you do that is because they will not be able to accrue any interest on that money because there's nothing there. And so what will happen is a lot of times the credit card companies will up your your credit amount. So let's say you get a secure card for two hundred and fifty dollars and you keep paying it off. Well, what they're going to do is they're going to up increase your credit limit to five hundred dollars or from five hundred dollars to seven hundred dollars, because their hope is that you'll be enticed to spend more. But don't do it. Don't do it. You want to continue to spend only what you can afford. Even if they up your limit to a thousand dollars or more, don't do it because what that is going to show the financial institution is that, wow, they have this high credit credit limit of a thousand dollars, but their balance is always at um, they're using the card, but their balance is always 250 or 300. They always pay it off and it's at zero and they love that. And it also makes your credit score go up a lot faster. Okay. You can rewind all this if you didn't catch all that. So once you do that for about this whole time period for number two, you doing the homework and cleaning up your credit could take anywhere from six months to a year. If you are proactive meaning you like you own this thing six months to a year for you to do that you contact everybody you own it you like handling your business you're doing it making these payments six months to a year give your month yourself six months to a year for cleaning up your credit doing the homework after you do that then you want to go back to your financial institution and do a pre-qualification once you've, I, I'll say after a year of just consistent payments, and you're also looking on Credit Karma, because you can look at what your credit score is, let's say when you first previously, and number one, you did the pre qualification, and your credit, let's say your credit score was 500, which is really low. And, and they tell you, well, in order for you to even qualify for a home loan, you need to have a credit score of 680. I don't know, I'm just throwing numbers out. I don't know what it is now. And you do all the work and it takes you about a year after you're consistently looking at Credit Karma to see where your credit score is and you see that your credit score is up to 680 or 685. Let's say it's at 685. Now you can go and pre-qualify for a home loan. And by this time, you should do your homework and figure out which financial in institution you want to go to. So you figure that out. You Google you do a comparison, see what people are saying about which banks or which credit unions worked best for them. You know, you do your homework and if you and whatever one you decide to go with, you go down there and you get pre-qualified and then they're going to do this whole process over again. And then you're going to get some news that you didn't hear the first time that you qualify. You have now qualified for a loan It is like the best news ever 
and they're going to tell you how much you qualify for. They're going to tell you, um, you know, how much you qualify for and all of that, which loans are available to you. And the most major loans that most people use is either the conventional loan or the FHA, which is the Federal Housing Administration. Both these loans, you have to do your homework to figure out which one are, are, is better for you. I can tell you right now, the FHA loan is is typically used for first time home buyers, and it requires a low down payment of as low as like three point five percent. But I'm not sure what it could be right now. But it could be really low compared to a conventional loan, which will typically require twenty percent down. And some people that are not first time home buyers. They typically have to go through the conventional loan uh, route or if you are a home, let's say you are a homeowner and you're like, Johnny, I want to, you know, buy another home or you want to get some income property. Well, I'm not going to say income property. That's a whole nother avenue. But let's say you want to buy another house um, and you're already a home owner. Well, to qualify for a first time home buyer had, I think it's like a three year period that needs to pass before you can qualify again as a first time home buyer. But I'm not sure do your research because this was a long time ago, over 10 years ago when I purchased a home and I don't know what the rules are right now because they could have changed, but go ahead and do your research, find out the pros and cons versus a FHA loan um, compared to a conventional loan. They have other loans too, the AMR loan, but those are the loans that are like the balloon payments. And I don't never talk about those, but they have different loans that are out there and just see which one works best for you. And the financial banker that's there or, and or advisor will tell you which ones are available and you can do your homework. No matter what anyone tells you, still do your homework and your own research. <clears throat> the other thing, Number four, I want to talk about is the down payment assistance program. Well, actually, it's number five, right? No, it's number six. Okay, so the down payment assistance program is what I want to talk to you about. And a lot of people don't really know that there's funding out there. And you might say, well, Sister Johnny, I didn't hear you say anything about savings. Well, you do want to save number two. And during that process, you do want to put some money away. I tend to tell people, you know, save as much as you can. 5,000, 6,000, 7,000, just put a little money away and forget about it and just save it. But depending upon which loan you get, it's a possibility that when you put down some of your money, that you will probably get most of the money back at the, at the close of the loan. And the reason why I say that is because of the down payment assistance. There is money out here for you to purchase a home with okay every city major city in the state of california has a down payment assistance program and it's an incentive to get home home owners or home buyer, buyers to come into their city and buy homes because when you buy a home there then it's revenue for them so they want to help you to buy a home in their city so they're all these neighboring cities are competing for people to come and buy a house in their city so they have funding to help you and you you with the city loans you can pay that money back either at the sale of the loan or the close of the loan which is if you get a 30 year or 15 year at the end of that then you'll pay the loan back of course there's interest on a loan but it's really minimum it's very low so you want to look into that and some of these cities they'll pay you up to twenty thousand dollars they will pay up to twenty thousand dollars for down payment assistance. Also with the FHA loan, they also have down payment assistance as well. Um, so you just have to figure out what you wanna, wanna do and what options are available for you. Some of these loans you cannot use in conjunction with, if you already getting a grant or a loan, down payment assistance from one program, you can't cross over to another program. So you just have to figure out which one best fits your needs. OK, and remember, you will have to put some money down because the bank just wants you to be able to put up a good faith um, down payment to show that, hey, I'm invested in this, too. Yes, I need your money, but I'm also putting a little bit of my money up, too, to show that I really am interested in buying me a home. And a lot of times, like I said, at the end of your escrow, when your loan closes, 
a lot of times that money you put up, they'll just return a check to you. They'll give you the money right back because of the down payment assistance, all these other fundings that came through to help with your down payment. You may not even, you may not even have to use any of your money. And that's why I say, don't worry about a auto loan, opening up any lines of credit outside of the credit card. If you're in the rebuilding phase of your credit, um, because once you get your home loan, I'm telling you, once you get approved for a house, I'm telling you what I know. You're going to get, you're not going to have any problem getting a car. You're not going to have any problem opening up a line of credit. In fact, people are going, mailing all kinds of things to you to get a car and to get a loan, uh, a credit card or whatever. But you just have to use wisdom because now you have a home loan and you have a home and it's a lot that comes with that. So I hope that helped you. These were six steps. The first thing I'll just re recount it or re say it. The first thing you want to do is you want to go get pre-qualified. Number two, you want to do the work from the information you find out in your pre-qualification step and follow that and then take about a year to just clean all that up while you're making payments and everything and rebuilding your credit. And then after that year, during that year, you're actually looking at Credit Karma to see where your credit is. Based off what you found out in step one during the pre-qualification period, you found out what your credit score is. You've worked towards what that credit score is. You're looking at Credit Karma during step two to find out if you're close to it or if you've reached it. Once you've reached it, now you want to go get pre-qualified, which is step three. And that's when you're going to get approved for the loan. And then you want to... Number four is the down payment assistance program. Number five, you want to learn about the pros and cons to the different um, FHA and um, conventional loans. Find out what's the difference between the two. Number six, you want to figure out which loan you want to go with. And then seven, I'm going to work with seven. Seven, now you're looking for a house, right? And that's it. I mean, it's really exciting. It could be kind of stressful in the beginning, but it's really exciting once you become a homeowner and uh, you've done the work. So be encouraged. Don't feel like it's not too far away. If you have any questions, go ahead and reach out to me. I am not a realtor. I am not selling homes. I owe you in or anything. I'm just giving information on how you can become a homeowner and for you to not feel like it's so far away. Okay. So be encouraged, reach out to me. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Thank you for listening. And remember, God loves you and he just wants to use you. This is In The Mix.